So this is Darren Doherty from uh, Southeastern Australia. And uh, Darren works all over the world in uh, this carbon farming key line design, which we'll be learning about today. Darren's been integral in uh, starting the, helping to start the uh, Marine Carbon Project, uh, which uh, has a lot of really excellent research out on uh, carbon sequestration okay. and uh, working with um, the Aboriginals in Australia and just a lot of, a lot of different people around the world. So I feel really fortunate to have Darren here at the ranch and um, yeah, sharing with all of us. So hopefully we can start to implement more of this. Key line design. So, thanks, Eric. Thank, thank you. Thanks to everyone who's uh, helped bring all of this together. And thank all of you for all turning up. That sort of helps. <laughs> and uh, of course, Eric for sweeping his shed, <laughs> moving things around. It's a pretty good shed, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a bit going on. We've <laughs> got a few motorbikes, and, uh, one of which to ride. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about this morning um, was uh, the concept of making our landscapes receive water more so that we can actually use that water to develop bio biological cycles, starting with photosynthesis and then all of the other cycles that come from that. So, as we say here, we need to be blue before we're green and black, meaning that we need to build water into our systems. We need to hydrate our systems before we can actually stimulate the biology, whether it's plants and organisms, and then get the residue of that from the cycling, which is the stuff called carbon. Right, so I want to talk about that in a practical sense. I'm not a scientist, so don't expect me to go into too much uh, molecular unravelling because I just don't go there. I failed year 9, 10, 11 and 12 and didn't have, have never attended a university apart from as a lecturer. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, all right. So, carbon farming, or the soil, water and carbon for every landscape. And I'll just let the computer fire up. This is a landscape in Australia. We've been working with carbon farming for some time because our landscape is very old and the feedback loop in Australia is much shorter than here in these relatively young landscapes. A lot of the parts of southeastern Australia, the geological age is between about 400 and 650 million years. If you go up into the northwest of Australia, it goes up to 4.2, 4.3 billion years. Right? So it's a long time without replenishment. Uh, it's a long time without any geological renewal as you have had here and you've still got that process ongoing, especially close to the Californian coast here. You're sort of uh, feeding the ocean more and more. A lot of our landscape is so old that we have a lot of salinity issues because of the amount of salt that's coming from, uh, from the ocean over time. And so we had some very, very quick feedback loops. Um, salinity is a really big issue for us, and I see that starting to emerge here in, uh, in California in places. Dry land salinity as well as irrigation land salinity is a big issue, much of which is linked to agricultural practices which uh, don't deal with, uh, with soil biology at all well, and we get compaction and all of those sorts of issues which um, enhance these factors. Um, holistic management and permaculture are the two things that I use in particular together. Permaculture design, a lot of you would know as a, as a, as a um, gardening practice or something like that. Well, for me, I'm a broadacre permaculture designer. I've never been coming from a broadacre farming background. I've never been much interested in uh, the gardening side of it, although it's quite important, of course. I've been more interested in uh, what we call the zone three landscapes in, in permaculture. Holistic management works very much in with that in terms of its uh, approach with rangeland management. Um, obviously Australia has some very substantial areas of range, um, so a lot of our business is around that and uh, combining these elements. Keyline design is, a, is it something that was built in Australia as well. Um, in the 1940s and 50s and really helped to inform the way that we design our landscapes. It was actually the first 
integrated landscape design system ever developed, where we look at a landform and then we manage it so that we build the soil, water and carbon resources of a farm with intentional design. And we'll talk a lot about that today. Plus, as we go on, we start to pick more things up that we put into our toolkit, whether it's the transition towns and relocalisation, which, which informs a lot of our marketing strategies these days, or whether it's ZERI and the Zero Emissions Research and Initiatives, how do we manage nutrients more effectively on our, on our, on our holdings and our enterprises, how do we deal with water, cleaning up the water that comes off our landscapes through the eco-restorer information. Carbon farming, which involves so much micro-restoration to again deal with some of our, well, just deal with the, with the bill that we've left from our work, particularly over the last 50 years since the Second World War. So we use all of these sorts of things together and I will continue to add to the toolbox and use different tools for each different farm. It's not a matter of as many people, they just put themselves in a little box. And they say, I'm just doing holistic management or I just do permaculture or I just do this, I just do that. The best results come from inter appropriate integration of these techniques. Are you getting the news or the weather? What, right now? Yeah. Because I do tend to um, oh, get a bit yeah. excited and might get the weather. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> you might want to put your shield down yeah. a bit more, yeah? <laughs> a bit of windshield. <laughs> All right, now today, um, well, this morning, what I wanted to go through, and we'll have to breeze through this quickly, so I'd ask if maybe we, if you've got a question, maybe just hold back because we've got a lot to get through before lunchtime. Um, and we can deal with some questions at the end of each session if that would be okay, and there's something that's absolutely bugging you. <laughs> but what I'd like to get through is just have an intro into what we're doing. I want to look at the carbon, um, the soil carbon picture. What is that looking like? And I don't mean so much in terms of the, uh, the whole mechanics of it. I'm more interested in where does it all sit with trading and uh, what are some of my beliefs on how that should operate? And just dispelling a few myths that are out there. Looking at holistic management, what about the key line plow? We've been lucky enough that uh, um, Wayne Pastorino has been very generous in allowing us to use his plow from the neighbouring ranch, so that's really fortunate. So we've got a plow to do a demo, but we'll talk about its applications. Look at various farm designs that I've done. I've been very fortunate since, uh, where was I? I think I was 24, I've just turned 42, so I've been did my first farm design when I was 24, whenever that was. Um, I've done about 12 or 1300 since. So we'll have a look at a small sampling of those. Um, integrated farming systems, how do we integrate systems together, you know, because we do have a lot of these methodologies. Um, and then the key line design, I want to concentrate a bit on that because it, it's a fairly interesting part of all of this and it's something that a lot of you wouldn't, have, wouldn't know about. Or have read a bit from the permaculture staff and have probably been very much confused by doing so. Because most people in the US who talked about, in the permaculture world, who talked about key line have absolutely no idea. That's quite clear. And it's the same in my country. Um, a lot of the permaculture books have very much confused what key line is about and certainly confused the, uh, the geometry of key line, which is, uh, which is quite specific. So I'd like to dispel some of that and um, also look at some of the scenarios and costings because that's obviously important. We need to look at how much these different systems that are out there actually cost to establish. Right, so without spending too much time here, we're from, um, my wife and I um, are both from South Eastern Australia. I'm a fifth generation farmer or from a fifth, fifth generation farm in Central Victoria, our family emigrated from Ireland in 1852 um, to the Gold Rush, as well as uh, a lot of Californians. I grew up in a place called California Gully. Um, yeah. And um, I've developed on, on five continents, haven't been to Africa yet, and I'm about 1,200 odd properties.